mapping from domain entities from UI table items. That's what we defined here. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. We are transforming expenses into expense view models. But what about and back? <laughs> <laughs> How can you convert it back into domain entities? Yeah. <laughs> That can be challenging, exactly. There are a couple of ways that we can use to do it. So I have a project here with exactly the setup we have right now. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the project. All right. So in the project, we have here a UI package with all the UI components here. All right. The purple components, purple or pink? Purple. <laughs> Let's call it purple. And as you can see, it has no dependencies. It doesn't depend on any other module. It's a standalone UI module that can be reused in isolation. Mm -hmm. It contains the detail of your controller, the list view controller, and so on, the view models. Now, we also have a domain package that doesn't depend on any other package. Mm -hmm. It's standalone, only contains the domain models. For example, an expense, and the expense has all the invariants for, it manages all the state to enforce the invariants. So if you wanna update the currency of an of a expense, you need to pass an exchange. So you can convert that amount in a specific way. If you want to update the date, for example, in this application, you cannot create, change the date of the expense to the future. It needs to be in the past. Right. And so on. So those are domain models. It shouldn't have any UI specific details because we should be able to use those models with different UI. And that's the benefit. So we have here an exchange, we have a currency, amounts and so on. All but right. You can see here how to convert an amount from one currency to another currency. Mm -hmm. All right. And the domain doesn't depend on any other component. So it can be reused in isolation as well. It can be tested in isolation, deployed in isolation, reused in isolation, just like the UI. They don't depend on anyone else. And then we have a service layer. And as you can see here, the service layer uses the domain. It creates the expenses. It loads mm -hmm. it from a database or it loads it from an API and so on. So the service package depends on the domain package. It has a dependency. That's it. So we have exactly this setup here in this project. All right. What about the adapters now? Since they don't talk to each other, how are we presenting these expenses on the UI? Because we have an adapter layer in the application module that converts, for example, a list, an expense into an expense list view model. Mm -hmm. And as we said here, it's just a simple extension in another module. It will create the expense with the expense name and the amount converted into a readable string. As you can see, it appends the currency code following the user preferences using a number formatter. So you can see here the details. All right. The same for the detail view model. You can convert an expense into a detail view model with this tiny extension. It will convert the amount, the date, the detail view model needs more data than the list view model. Because the list item view model only depend, only needs a title and the amount. If you want more details, you need to navigate to the detail view controller where you get the amount, the date, the last updated date, the name, the description, and so on. All right. Okay. So this adapter layer protects these two modules from depending on each other and it stays in the composition there in the application module. Yeah. And we also have an adapter that implements the 
controller delegate. So let's have a look at the controller delegate. It has one mod, one method, did request to load expenses, and that's it. Again, this could be a closure, anything that gives you this polymorphic behavior. Okay. So our service adapter depends on the service, just like here, it uses the service and implements the delegate. And this adapter, expense service adapter, also lives here in the application module. Make sense? And when the view controller requests an expense, you will start a task, call the service, and when it's done, you will tell the controller to present the expense view models that were converted here in the adapter layer. So we get a list of expenses and we convert them into expense, a list of expense list item view model. All right. And this tiny adapter layer is what protects us from the unwanted dependencies. So this gives us the freedom to move those modules in isolation, reuse them in isolation, test them in isolation, deploy them in isolation, compile them in isolation. You can run the tests only in the UI without recompiling the domain and vice versa. That's they it. Are completely isolated. So that's the implementation. If you want to decouple both modules, but there's a problem here. As soon as we convert an expense into an expense like item view model, we lose information. We have much less information here than before. Let's put them side by side here. Where is it? The expense. All right. Look, we lose information. An expense has much more properties. It has an ID, a name, a description, a date, a less updated date, amount, and so on. But here, we only need the name and amount. Mm -hmm. That is converted into a string. We cannot convert the string back into a decimal in a currency code. We probably could, but it would be very cumbersome to convert it back into an expense. But to create the expense detail view model, to present the next screen, the detail view, we need an expense. All right. So let's have a look now in the view controller. List view controller. Right here. When you select a cell, we need to get an expense because with that expense, we can create a detail view model and present the detail view controller. But since we converted the expense into expense view model, the view controller only knows about the view model. You cannot convert that back into expense. And this is the problem we're talking about in this session. And back, how to map <laughs> from domain to UI and then from UI to domain. So you can deal with this problem. Yeah. Exactly. There's only 30 minutes to set up the, the <laughs> challenge. <laughs> and again, guys, this is, we are setting constraints here, right? Like we want our modules to be decoupled before anyone jumps and says, well, pass the expense, you know, in the view model and pass it to the detail view. No, like this is a very specific scenario we're talking about. Yeah, if you have a simple application and you don't have yeah. modules or packages <laughs> and you're not reusing code, don't do this. <laughs> exactly. You don't need don't any do of these things. This is an advanced setup for large projects that, you know, you're building many apps and reusing all these components in separate applications with multiple teams working together and you want to isolate as much as possible change so you don't get on each other's way. Yeah. All right, look at that. This is a problem I face in every project. Again, great session. Awesome. Yeah. Real life scenario. Absolutely. <laughs>
And how do you fix it? How do you deal with it? So a common solution is to keep a reference to the expense or to the domain model in the view model. So let's have a look at the view model again. We lost information here when we mm -hmm. transformed. How can we bring it back? One way is to keep the expense here. Does it have a reference to the expense? What is the problem? The problem is that the expense list item view model lives in the UI module. Mm -hmm. If we reference the, the expense domain model here, we need to import domain. We need to import domain. We also need to add domain as a dependency in our module. So it won't be independent anymore. We need to add here the package dependency on the domain. That's not what we want. So this will not do. Exactly. Like instantly when you type import, you have this dependency with that uh, framework. So in case if you're wondering if you're coupling your components with other modules. So the, the detail view model needs name, description, date, last updated date and amount, but the list item view model only needs name and amount. And maybe even though they both have name and amount, doesn't mean they have the same formatting. Maybe you have a shorter formatting here for the list and in the detail view, you have a different formatting. For example, if you have a date here, maybe you're using a short date format, but you use a long date format in the other screen because you have more space for it, for example. So another solution to this problem is to make sure that you have all the properties that both screens need in one view model. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. you would put everything in one view model. So let's say uh, name, description. When you create the view model for the list view controller, you already give all the properties that next view UI needs as well. It's called technical so, debt. It's been created right there. <laughs> Then you have these conflicts as well. You probably yeah. have to call this detail name. Detail name, yes. <laughs> exactly. Right? Leaking. Yes. Yeah. Or you will already create upfront the detail view model and put it here, detail view model. Mm -hmm. Even though we may never navigate to the detail view model, you will have to keep that information in there so you can pass it forward. So this works. It still keeps the separation. But the problem is, what if you have like 10 screens that you can navigate to? Will you keep the de all the detail for all the view models for all the possible screens just because you might get there? That's a problem yeah. that can really complicate the creation of this view model and the usage of this view model. But if you have a reference to the detail here, now in the view controller, you can get the expense from for example, you get the expenses, whoop, expenses at index, F row, and the expenses view model is the expense dot detail. We just added there. And then you can create a view controller. That's it. Without going back to the domain. You don't need to convert. But then you need to create all the view models, all possible state you need upfront even though we may never need it. So this is one way. And you are also coupling here one view controller with the other, which sometimes you don't want because maybe these view controllers might be even in separate UI modules. You might have such a modular code base that different scenes might be in different modules. Yeah. So this work in specific scenarios, but it complicates the usage, the creation of the view model. It may not work all the time if you have the UI in separate modules, the view controllers in separate modules. Go to the next solution. Yeah, plus it, it exposes APIs that the view controller doesn't need, but a developer may use uh, to, you know, may query to, to, to get information they need and that can create problems. So if you don't use something, just don't expose it. That's it. So the other solution is to move presentation away 
from the view controller. The view controller should not present the detail view controller. Hmm? Someone else should. One way of doing it is instead of adding a detail view model here, we can create a selection closure in your view model. Call it select. Of course, if you hold a reference to it, it needs to be escaping. Mm -hmm. Okay. This way, the view controller doesn't need to know how to navigate to the next view controller. It doesn't need to know how to create the dependencies of the next view controller as well. What you need to do is to find the expense at index or select. Now, what happens when this was selected doesn't matter for the list view controller. Mm -hmm. Also, doesn't matter for the view model. The view model doesn't care what happens. Yeah. It just holds that selection functionality in here. This is just, again, an abstract interface here. What happens here? Maybe it's going to fire some analytics. Maybe it will transition to a new screen. Maybe it will present it modally. It doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter. All right. This way, we still keep the separation. Now the view controller doesn't even depend on the other view controller anymore. Yeah. Right? 